So you mentioned surprising being a characteristic of uh, creativity. Is there something, you already mentioned a few examples, but is there something that jumps out at you as was particularly surprising from the various evolutionary computation systems you've worked on, the solutions that were uh, come up along the way, not necessarily the final solutions, but maybe things that were even discarded. Mm. Is there something that just jumps to mind? It, it, it happens all the time. I mean, evolution is so creative, uh, so good at discovering uh, solutions you don't anticipate. A lot of times they are taking advantage of something that you didn't think was there, like a bug in the software. For yeah. instance, a lot of, there's a great paper, uh, the community put it together about uh, surprising anecdotes about evolution computation. A lot of them are indeed in some software environment, there was an, a, a loophole or a bug mm -hmm. and the system uh, utilizes that. By the way, for people who want to read it, it's kind of fun to read. It's, uh, it's called The Surprising Creativity of Digital Evolution, a collection of anecdotes from the evolutionary computation and artificial life research communities. And there's just a bunch of stories from all the seminal figures in this yeah. community. Uh, you have a story in there uh, that released to you, at least on the tic-tac-toe memory bomb. <laughs> so can you, can you uh, I guess, uh, describe that situation if you think that's- Yeah, <laughs> that, still... that was, that's a, quite a bit smaller scale than our um, basil doesn't need to sleep surprise, but <laughs> but it, it was actually done by students in my class mm -hmm. um, in a neural nets evolution computation class. Uh, there was an assignment. Uh, it was perhaps a final project where people built game playing uh, AI. It was an AI class. Uh, and this one, th and, and it was for tic-tac-toe or five in a row in a large board. Uh, and uh, this one team evolved a neural network uh, to make these moves. Uh, and um, they set it up, the evolution. They didn't really know what would come out, um, but it turned out that they did really well. Evolution actually won the tournament. And uh, most of the time when it won, it won because the other teams crashed. And then when we look at it, like what was going on was that evolution discovered that if it makes a move that's really, really far away, like millions of squares mm -hmm. uh, away, uh, the other uh, teams, the other programs just expanded memory in order to take that into account until they run out of memory and crashed. And then you win a tournament by crashing all your opponents. I think that's quite a profound example, uh, which is probably applies to most games from a, even a game theoretic perspective, that sometimes to win, you don't have to be better within the rules of the right. game. You have to come up with ways to break your opponent's uh, brain, uh, if it's a human. <laughs> like, not yeah. through violence, but through some hack where the brain just is not, um, you're basically, uh, how would you put it? You're, you're, the, you're going outside the constraints of where the brain is able to, uh, to yeah, function. Expectations of your opponent. I mean, yeah. It, this was even Kasparov pointed that out that when Deep Blue was playing against Kasparov, that it was not playing the same way as Kasparov expected, uh, and this has to do with you know being not having the same biases, uh, and that's that's really one of the strengths of of the uh, AI approach. Yeah.